Hello YouTube, it's Supernova, back with more DCS A10C. Today we're looking at Mark 82 LDGP and Mark 82 Air unguided bombs in CCRP and CCRP delivery modes. The Mark 80 series of bombs was developed in the 1950s. The standard Mark 82 is a low drag slick bomb, referred to as low drag general purpose. The bomb falls ballistically after release and four conical tail fins provide flight stability. Master arm, arm. To view the digital stores management system or Dismas page, press OSB 14. Six Mark 82 LDGPs are loaded on triple ejector racks on stations four and eight. Delivery parameters for specific weapon types are called profiles. A manual profile can be created by selecting one or more stations with the corresponding OSB. Note that the manual profile is now displayed. To edit the manual profile, press OSB1. Enter the desired changes and to save the profile, press OSB3. When changing weapon type, the manual profile is discarded. Stored profiles can be selected and made active through the profile main page. To view the profile main page, press OSB1. To select the Mark 82 LDGP profile, use OSB19 and OSB20 to cycle the list. To make the profile active, press OSB17. To view the profile control page, press OSB3. Set release type with OSB6. Release type can be set as singles, pairs, ripple singles and ripple pairs. When a ripple release type is selected, the ripple quantity setting becomes active. Ripple quantity defines the number of bombs to release. For example, ripple singles with a ripple quantity of 2 will release one bomb from station 3, then one bomb from station 7, while ripple pairs with a ripple quantity of 2 will release two bombs, one from station 3 and one from station 7. Note that when releasing a ripple of bombs, the bombs will impact around the PIPA aim point. To select ripple quantity, enter the desired number in the scratch pad and press OSB7. Set fuse select with OSB7. Fusing options are nose, tail and nose and tail. The FMU-139 electronic bomb fuse is used in Mark 80 LDGP bombs. A 4 second arming time has been set. Set fuse select to nose. If the selected fuse setting is invalid, it will be highlighted in yellow. In this example we will use the default ripple interval of 75 feet. To set the ripple interval, enter the desired interval in feet in the scratch pad and press OSB9. Delivery mode can be set to Continuously Computed Impact Point, or CCIP, or Continuously Calculated Release Point, or CCRP. CCIP is a predicted point of impact. The aim point is set visually with the reticle pipper when manoeuvring onto the target. The pilot then pickles to release the bombs. To set the delivery mode, press OSB 10. To view the profile settings page, press OSB 16. The minimum altitude setting, combined with fuse setting, 
defines the behaviour of the minimum range staple. To set minimum altitude, enter the desired minimum altitude in the scratch pad and press OSB 18. The escape manoeuvre setting helps to define safe release parameters. To set the desired escape manoeuvre, press OSB 20. Escape manoeuvre can be set as non, climbing, turning or turn level turn. To save the profile, press OSB 3. And to return to the profile control page, press OSB 1. The current release mode is displayed. The release mode can be selected from the IFFCC menu. Options are manual release, 5mm and 3.9. Manual release is the default mode. The active profile name is displayed below the release mode. You may cycle the release mode with DMS left and right. The projected bomb impact line or PBIL predicts where the CCIP will track based on current airspeed G load and bank angle. If a ripple release is selected, the bomb stick will fall along the PBL, and the CCIP solution indicates the centre of the bomb stick length. The PBL is dashed when the CCIP bomb reticle is outside the hood field of view. Note the minimum range staple or MRS on the PBL. The staple indicates the minimum release range of the selected Dismas profile. The CCIP bomb reticle should always be below the MRS. If the MRS descends the PBL and meets the reticle, an X will be displayed in the centre of the reticle to indicate an invalid release. The CCIP bomb reticle pipper is placed on the target. In manual release mode, the weapon release button is then pressed and held down until release is complete. Five mil and three nine are consent to release modes. Using the consent to release modes, the time in the attack dive can be reduced, and the escape manoeuvre started earlier. To select a consent to release mode, set the IFFCC switch on the AHCP panel to the test position. And use the data rocker to cycle between the options. Then return the IFFCC switch to the on position. The PBL is dashed when the aircraft is pitched down more than 3 degrees. Place the PIPA on the intended target, then press and hold the weapon release button. The PBL will turn solid, and an azimuth steering line, or ASL, appears on the hood, indicating the required heading to the target. A small circle called the Solution Queue appears on the ASL. Next to the queue is the Time to Release Numeric, or TTRN. This indicates the time in seconds until the weapon should release. As the Solution Queue descends the ASL, maintain heading so that it passes through the reticle PIPA. Weapon release occurs automatically when the release parameters have been met. The 3-9 mode simply requires the solution queue to pass through the reticle.
When desired time of fall or DTOF is set, the desired release cue or DRC appears on the P-ball. When the DRC is placed on the target, the CCIP bomb reticle moves up the P-ball, and when the two are over the endpoint, the desired release altitude is met. Note that time of fall is not calculated by the pilot. Information specific to particular release parameters is found in reference material, which is not available to the public. In this example we will use a high altitude dive bomb profile, diving from 14,000 feet with a planned dive angle of 30 degrees, a recovery altitude of 4,500 feet and a desired time of fall of 13.1 seconds. Note that to enter a decimal point, first use the letter key to input the letter associated with the UFC or CDU key. In this example, to input 13.1, we enter 1, 3, we then press the letter key, then 0 and 1. To set DTOF, enter the desired value in the scratch pad, and press OSB 19. Press OSB 3 to save the profile. A BSU-49B high drag tail assembly, also called a balut, is added to a Mark 82, creating a Mark 82 air inflatable retard. The balut retards the weapon when released at low altitude, helping the releasing aircraft to escape the blast effect of the weapon. Six Mark 82 airs are loaded on triple ejector racks on stations 3 and 9. Select the Mark 82 air profile and make it active. If a Mark 82 air is selected, fuse select must be set to either tail or nose and tail for a high drag release with the balut deployed. Two time of fall options are now available. High drag time of fall if the balut will be used and if slick release is desired, low drag time of fall. If neither field is set, the DRC will not appear on the people. CCRP calculates a release point for a pre-designated target. The target can be designated as center point of interest or SPI with the TDC or TGP. The pilot then flies a bearing to line up with the target and holds down the pickle button to automatically drop at the correct release point. Press DMS left or right short to select the desired weapon profile. To select CCRP, press the master mode control button until CCRP is selected. The ASL indicates heading to the SPI. A locator line extends from the SPI to the TVV, or from the TVV to the SPI, if the SPI is outside the HUD field of view. Align the projected bomb release line, or PBRL, with the ASL. The TTRN appears next to the solution queue, indicating projected time in seconds until release. Approximately 6 seconds before reaching the release point, the solution queue will begin to descend the ASL. Press and hold the weapon release button, and because CCRP uses 5mm mode, ensure the solution queue falls through the reticle pipa.
as always feel free to like comment and subscribe